Welcome to Local Spotlight on Grand County TV 18. I'm Jerry Nissen, and I'm here today with Dr. Ernesto Ciroli. Uh, Dr. Ciroli is the founder of the Ciroli Institute, which is an international nonprofit organization that teaches community leaders how to establish and maintain enterprise facilitation projects in their community. Welcome. Yes. Thanks Thank you, for being here. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Um, Dr. Ciroli, you've, you've been involved in programs in numerous places around the world. Can you describe some of the results that you've achieved with enterprise facilitation programs in an area like Grand County, some of the smaller communities that yeah. we were talking about earlier? Yeah, I, um, when I come to Grand um, uh, County, um, the, the physical nature of the place reminds me of Eastern uh, Oregon. And we have a project in, in Eastern Oregon that is 12 years old. In 12 years old, they helped to start more than 100 businesses. But the 100 businesses that they help, they, uh, the feature is that when they celebrated 10 years of activities, 84 were still open after 10 years. That's excellent. And this was documented many times because the state of Oregon was in the agriculture department where the major funders of the project. So you know bureaucracies, they want to, to document it. So it was documented time and time and time again, and people said, how do you manage to have businesses that remain open? 84% is unheard of. It's a very, very high success and, rate. And um, what we were talking about, were two things, was the very slow beginning of the project, at the beginning, there was this kind of very skeptical reception by um, cattle ranchers, um, timber people. They have never, ever heard of this enterprise facilitation. What is this stuff? Right. And the project had been supported by a tiny minority of the community. Uh, somebody had discovered my work, invited me to give presentations. But maybe 30 people were actively engaged in writing grants and pay for the enterprise facilitator. But after a while, this enterprise facilitator was able to, maybe starting with some very marginalized businesses, people that were not considered real entrepreneurs. He was able to help the initial few businesses and then slowly the ripples effect you know, started to spread, right. and more and more people came to speak to the enterprise facilitator, and he went from dealing with the done and out, the poorer of the poor, to start to deal with the people with actually the money, the new right. retirees, the people coming from, I remember a couple, they just retired from the army, and they wanted to come to the beautiful location to open up a bed and breakfast. And uh, uh, so he went from working for the poorest of the poor the done and out, the desperate people, right. to start to work with the more affluent people, with the new arrival, and then with the, uh, the, f the ranchers and the farmers, and all of a sudden there was this kind of understanding in the community of their role, this magnificent position of somebody who for free and in confidence come to your house to listen to your story and to um, talk to you about what really is the essence of enterprise. It does sound a lot like our area where we have a significant number of people that are in financial straits. Absolutely, And, and yes. we also have the tourists, we also have the retirees, some of whom come in with some money in their pocket and may be interested in uh, starting yeah. a, a new enterprise of some sort, a new business. Yes, what has happened in Granby, we have had now an enterprise facilitator here for uh, a year, and uh, he's doing some of the remedial work, for, uh, remedial work for people who maybe should have had advice before they open up the business here, because they came here, they saw maybe in summer or maybe in winter, they saw tourism activities, they thought, hey, you know, low rental, low accommodation, I come out of a big city, I come here, I will be fine. And then they discover 
that for that kind of business that they have, there is only a trade for two months of the year, and then they, they're struggling. Uh, what we hope is that uh, uh, Patrick, uh, uh, our enterprise facilitator, will slowly m start to help small businesses like he's doing, then the word of, of mouth will spread so that people before they start the business come to him to say, do I have my ducks in a row? Do I know what I'm doing? So at this point, it sounds like you're largely working with established businesses, half and helping half. them half and half. half, and half. Yeah. So you're half helping half. people get on the right track. Some, more than 60 people have uh, uh, come to ask for uh, support. And uh, the support is strictly uh, what we call management coaching. We teach people that uh, uh, if you want to be successful in business, there has to be different people doing the different aspects of the business because we never met anybody who can make it, sell it, and look after the money. Right. You, you mentioned that a few minutes ago in your presentation to the group. I am I hammering that. that I am on a crusade. I believe that nobody ever, ever, ever should write a business plan alone. I think that to tell people to write a business plan as an individual is a crime. It should be punishable. I think that we should do a class action suit to the first uh, academic who invented the business plan-based entrepreneurial coaching. And all of uh, coaching of entrepreneurs is based on this stupid idea that I give you a 60-page blank business plan, right. and I send you home to say, come back to me when you have written the business plan. In our methodology, the business plan is always, only, ever written by the team. The person who loves to make it, the person who loves to sell it, and the person who really understands the finance, mm -hmm. write the business plan. They collaborate and put this together. How can you write beautifully about something that you hate? Absolutely. If you don't have the personality for marketing and you are a salesperson, you know that it takes a special person to go out and knock at doors to find out what the public wants. Right. If Absolutely. you are a cattle rancher who only love is to produce a better animal, but you shy, withdrawn, and you are incapable of going to knock at doors and speak to the ladies about the cattle meat that they like, you know, how can you write a business plan about this new organic beef that you want to take to the market? Right. The only thing that you understand is the product. You don't understand marketing and you don't understand financial management. So sometimes, what, you know, what I've been on this crusade, the crusade is stop telling people to do what no entrepreneur has ever done. No entrepreneur as an individual has ever started a company. Uh, Henry Ford went bankrupt twice right. when he started to set up the Ford company alone. Only the third time when one of his investors, Malcolmson, obliged him to have a financial manager, James Cousin. Okay. Now they had product, finance, and the two of them and their advisors came up with a way of selling the Ford cars, which, which, uh, which was by inventing the dealership concept. And they started with 470 dealers. So they had product, Henry, right. 470 dealers selling it, and James Cousin, financial management. Third time the Ford Motor Company made Third it. time's a charm in this case. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. I'm here today with Dr. Ernesto Ciroli, and we're talking about enterprise facilitation on Grand County TV 18. back. We're here again today with Dr. Ernesto Ciroli and we're talking about uh, enterprise facilitation and KPOX is your organization that you're involved with that works with the Grand Enterprise Institute here in Grand Absolutely. County. Absolutely. They, they are the entity that has been uh, partly funding the, uh, the project and it is a local organization founded here but uh, the Grand Enterprise Initiative is what is employing Patrick, uh, the enterprise Patrick facilitator. Rauer, right. The enterprise facilitator, yes. And how, how does a person um, work with the Grand Enterprise? Well, the, uh, it is free, it's confidential, it's uh, 
the only uh, characteristic is that the person has to make the approach. Um, we don't go around and try to convince people to start businesses. It's the other way around. It's like family doctors. If you, uh, if you are in pain, <laughs> you go and see the doctor. <laughs> what we, uh, we hope is that uh, there will be also people coming to see uh, Patrick before they start the business right. instead of when the pain uh, hits them. When they're stumbling. Uh, yes, because it's very, very, very important that uh, um, uh, entrepreneurs and new entrepreneurs understand how they should organize their company before they start the business. Um, what we are saying is that entrepreneurship is um, a social event. Intelligence is personal, okay? But entrepreneurship is a social event. And the best way to describe it is this. Business is a team sport. Right. Okay? So if you say, I'm fantastic at playing ball, and you go and want to play ball, and when you come into the ballpark, they look at you and say, you can't play. And you say, but I'm the best ball player. They say, yeah, but what is your team? Right. Exactly. You know, the guy said, what do you mean? I'm, I want to play ball against you. You can't. You're not even allowed into the ballpark if you are alone. Right. So team is what makes a business. So the relationship with, with us, enterprise facilitators, is that we nail you down on the team issue. And we say, what is your dream? And we respect your dream. And then we say, to fulfill your dream, you need people in charge of making it, right. selling it, look after the money. Do and we never met anybody who has the personality to do these three things equally, beautifully, and passionately. Right. Do, do you help people find that team yes, locally? Yes, we first ask them, do you know somebody yourself? And then if they say, I'm new to this town, I don't know anybody, I don't know anybody who understands money and finance. We say to them, would you like us to help you? And if the person says, yes, please, uh, the enterprise facilitators are supported by a group of volunteers. They're sworn to secrecy. They come, they come together every month. They are like a rotary club on steroids. They, uh, they sit there sworn to secrecy. They listen to the enterprise facilitator. Enterprise facilitator says, I need to find a retired accountant for Mary. I need to find a, a, a student uh, who has the personality to go and knock at 100 doors, right. showing this product to say, if this product is available to you at this price, would you purchase this? So and come back with the results. So we, we help the client do that, form the team. Once your team is in place, what happens next? Once the team is in place, now we can speak to the entire team to say, guys, what do you need? Do you need a blank business plan? Do you need, uh, after you do the business plan as a team, do you need a source for funding? Then I can send you to the SBA, I can send you to the, uh, to the micro lending, I can send you to the bank, because now you have the team, the team has run, uh, run the business plan. The team has the documentation that if we open up a childcare, I already have a list of 60 uh, uh, families wanting to sell, okay. to send the children to us. You see, we have the evidence. So this is what we do. Make sure that we have a team formed before the entrepreneur goes and mortgage the, the house to start the business. So Patrick works with them once the team is in place and brings in the local resources. First, he works with the individual. From the individual f helps to form the team. Once they have the team, is still available to the team if they need to find resources. The team can keep going to Patrick to say, where do we go now looking for money? And Patrick can say, okay, let me make some telephone calls. Let me make some appointments with the bank managers. Because uh, Patrick works with all the other agencies and institutions. He works with the economic development uh, director for the county. He works for, for anybody that he can find. He will call, right. make appointments for your teams. But the important role is the one of saying to people, who is going to sell this product of yours? Who sure. understands financial management? 
and financial management is more than having an accountant. The accountant Absolutely. you see once a year. The financial management is somebody that you see every couple of months to say, am I doing the right thing? Day -day am I going to control am I going? purchases and Yeah, and looking at the, looking in front. Overhead, everything. Exactly. So. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And after, after Patrick and the team has worked with, with uh, the entrepreneur, um, they go out and they... They start trying to actually create the business, actually absolutely. get it rolling. They, absolutely. Uh, uh, w w uh, Patrick is also the person who says to the entrepreneur, uh, do you want some help with your opening? We, I can, we can invite, we can go to the media, we can invite people to come to the grand opening. Uh, we can, you know, uh, help you uh, increasing the profile of your business in the community. But Patrick is not the person who will do it, Patrick will be the person helping the marketing person from that team to do the grand opening uh, with resources, say, no, I know people at the county level, why don't we invite the commissioners to come, why don't we invite the mayors to come, and right. so on. Uh, the important thing is for the entrepreneurs to stop the solitude, to stop being alone. Being alone is the death of entrepreneurship. Right. It's who you know more than what you know. And, and this is something that the business people know. I mean, successful business people, they will tell you, is who you know more than Absolutely. what you know. Yeah, it's, it's networking. It's, it's bringing networking. everything together. Absolutely, it's getting to, uh, to know the, the people who can make one telephone call and change your business <laughs> because they know a buyer in Texas. They know a, a possible right. source of uh, product for you. So this is what we are encouraging. Stop being alone. Stop playing the fence. Come out. What are you going to risk? It's confidential. Right. Yeah, but recognize at least you have, that you can't do it all yourself. But we have people who, because they talk at the meeting with us, at the first meeting, once they hear their own voice, they realize that they are alone. They realize they don't know about finance. They realize that they are too shy to go and sell. So then they say, you're right, you know, I know exactly what's wrong now. Yeah. Sometimes we do a little drawing, we do the smiling face of the client at the top, and we draw three little boxes, product, marketing, finance. And we say to the client, Which look at this you? drawing, tell me who are you? Right. And very often people said, oh my God, the only thing I love is to make it. Right. And then we say, you're the boss of the company, now you have to have somebody selling it and somebody looking after the money. And people say, I don't have the money to pay people. And we say, whoever mentioned money, you could have somebody selling on a commission basis. Right. You could have somebody who is a retired accountant that in exchange for you grooming the dog will do the accounts, uh, you know, uh, one hour a month will do the accounts for your dog grooming business. If you are selling something, maybe you make a deal. When you start to make money, you pay for your, fin for your right. accountant. Right. You know, in, look, there are many, many ways to do it. You can beg, you can barter, you can form part partnership, but don't stay alone. Thanks so much. Thank we'll you. be back in just a couple of minutes. We're back on Local Spotlight with Dr. Ernesto Ciroli, and enterprise facilitation has been documented in your new book, and I'll get the title right. Uh, your newest book is How to Start a Business and Ignite Your Life, and it focuses on management principles utilized by your enterprise training methodology. And uh, we'll have a graphic up on the book later, as well as some links to much. various things. Yes. Um, your, your approach to working with uh, businesses plays down uh, the group meetings, the community meetings, and encourages a much more one-on-one -on -one approach. Yeah. Um, one of the things I've, I've learned about you is that you feel that entrepreneurs don't like talking about their business ideas. Of course not. It's about making money. Why would I go to a public meeting to tell the people that I found a way to make money in this county? I mean, 10 people with more money than me <laughs> will go straight into that business. 
So one, so there is, uh, I call it a blind spot. Planners, uh, county planners, city planners, uh, you know, state planners, they have this blind spot. They make these wonderful plans, they go to the community, they ask for consultation. Guess what? None of the people in the community with the real money and the real passion will speak at the public meeting about what they want to do with their money. So now they have the plan, and guess what? The plan is always antagonizing the people in business because the business, uh, people in business have not told the planners what they want to do with their own money. So Makes now sense. you have the plan, and the people in business are always complaining. So what we have to do, we have to find a confidential way for lots and lots and lots of local entrepreneurs to come and talk to someone who then become capable of saying, it's not true that we don't have people who need space for the arts. We have 30 people who are looking for a, uh, an exhibition space. Don't demolish the building that you think county is useless. Right. Because guess what? There are all these people who individually don't have the money, but as a group, they could rent that. Eh? And the planner says, how do you know? <laughs> well, because they come and talk to me. Right. Because I cannot give you the name, but I can tell you that we have stacks of people looking for space or looking for doing sports activity or uh, in, in business-wise. Right. So what I'm saying is that there is a blind spot. The planners do not have the trust because the planners are obliged to go to public meetings, they report to the city council, to the county government, and entrepreneurs are not going to go and tell people what they want to do with their money. So you have to, uh, to offer a, a service that is confidential, and if you want to capture the maximum number of entrepreneurs, the service to the entrepreneur has to be free. So now we have a community paying for a person to work with you one-on-one -on -one for free. Right. Why would a community provide a service to individual entrepreneurs? Why would a community do that? Benefits the entire community, obviously, if people it's succeed. One, you see, to me, when I came to America as an Italian, I discovered one of the things that the American pioneers did. And when I discovered what these guys were doing, I could not believe it because in Europe we had never, ever, ever come across the concept. When the pioneer family were crossing America from east to west, right. they only had two or three months time to do the crossing because otherwise winter would, would grab you and you could die. Okay. What happened is that sometimes this family with the wagons would come through Colorado, through, they would be in the middle of Minnesota, they would be in Iowa, they would be in the heart of the country. Right. And they would arrive in a little village. And the local people would say to this family, stay, settle here. Perfect. If you settle here, we are going to build you a barn. We'll help you get started. And the community will come together 400 men would build in a day a barn for this new pioneer family to settle for free. Wonderful. Why would a people in, the, in America try to get a family to stay in the village? Community building. Because it was useful to have neighbors. If you were alone in the, in the frontier and you broke a leg, you, your family would starve. <laughs> you know, you had to defend yourself. The more neighbor, the better. Right. So you would have an entire community building a barn so that people would settle there. It's good to have neighbors. It's good to have a daughter that can marry somebody because now you have the, the children of somebody else there. So it was an entire effort to help one family. What I am saying is, let's build businesses for our neighbors. Are, are you finding that rural communities, such as we have here in Grand County, are particularly interested in helping each They've other? They've forgotten. 
Have they? Is 100 years of solitude. I'm saying to the Americans, why have you stopped giving, why have you given up of your neighbor? You want your neighbor to be wealthy. It's good to be surrounded by wealthy people. It's good to have hope in your community. It's good to have a community where you get together to support entrepreneurs. And this is what the enterprise facilitation does. The enterprise facilitator says to you, what can you do? I can only breed the animal, but I cannot sell it, and I cannot look after the money. So what you do, you say, would you like me to find you somebody in this community who knows where to sell organic beef? Would you like me to find you somebody who is a retired accountant who for a cut of meat every month will do your accounts? And so what you do, you find in the community the team. So now you have an entire community mobilizing to help that farmers do well, to help that woman start in the business. So you see, it's a barn building in modern time where right. you're helping people to prosper. Are, are you and Patrick Brower, your team here in, in Grand County, finding uh, this sort of support, this sort Absolutely. of community Absolutely, we effort? find the community support. Now what we have to do, we have to have more and more people to stop dying of solitude and come for the first time in their life to ask for help because nobody can run a business alone and I want your viewers the people wo watching this video they they're struggling they are trying to do everything in a business they're only doing one thing well and two things badly because they only love one thing right to stop the solitude come to Patrick and say what am I doing wrong can you help me to find somebody to help me to market? Can you help me to find a retired accountant to take care of my finances? Stop the solitude, stop the bleeding, come and talk to us about your problems because it could be that the solution to your problem is somebody who just retired here from Denver and knows everything about right. what you need. But if you don't talk, we're not saying that you should come and tell your story in public. No, 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 no. It's one-on-one. -on -one. We can sign no compete, non disclose. Sure, we sure. will protect you, but you have to come and talk. If you don't start forming a team, you will never succeed in business. Yeah, the team if is critical. you don't have a team, you will never succeed in business. And if you are in business alone and you've been in business for five years, alone is because a team has not discovered your niche. Right, as right. soon as a team discover your little niche business, they are going to kick you so bad that you don't know what has <laughs> happened to you. So my advice to people out there, stop pretending that you are running a business alone right. because you are not. Very good. Thanks very much, Dr. Ciroli. We'll be back with a final word. Uh, in just a few moments. This is Grand County TV 18. Stay tuned. Good stuff. Welcome back. I'm here with Dr. Ernesto Ciroli um, with the final word. You, you mentioned uh, you have a different approach than a lot of people do in business. Uh, I had a mentor years ago in business who said, plan your work and work your plan. Mm -hmm. And you talk about a much more uh, spontaneous approach, um, much more oriented towards uh, minimizing planning. Uh, you quote Peter Drucker talking about planning being uh, the death knell of a, a business and so on. Um, what, what do you have to say about that? What, what do you think of the different approaches? Uh, actually, I'm working now with uh, uh, two different uh, uh, universities, and I'm working with two professors of entrepreneurship, one in America and one in Australia. The, the Australian professor they, they, uh, is actually uh, from Sweden, and uh, he conducted studies on entrepreneurs. And what these two professor, Per Davidson and Professor Sarasvati here in America say, is that entrepreneurs think differently from managers. And the way they describe it is absolutely fantastic. They say entrepreneurs are explorers. 
and managers as settlers. That's In an other words, way of looking at it. okay, what they say is that uh, it is absolutely useless to tell an explorer to carry oxen, plows, and seeds because on the first journey of discovery, the explorer does not even know whether he's going to find land there. Once the land has been found, according to the characteristics of the land, and the explorer comes back, now the manager goes, and the manager is the settler. So what you tell the settler is carry oxen, <laughs> uh, plows, and seeds, because there is arable land there. So what has been happening is that we have been teaching explorers how to be managers. That's why all the entrepreneurs run away from university screaming. <laughs> That's why there are no entrepreneurs with PhDs. Right. Because we are beating the psychological life out of the smartest explorers in our culture. We want to have explorers to start behave like settlers. And the explorers need different skills. The best education that you can give to an explorer is to get the explorer to read Ernest Shackleton book. Ah, Antarctica. On how he formed the team that saved the lives of all the crew when they got stuck on ice for a year. Right. So what the explorer needs is to form a team with the navigator, the carpenter, the guy who can fix the ship, the guy who can uh, work with the pack dogs. So the skills that we have to give to the entrepreneur are not what we have to teach to the manager. The manager go to MBA school. The entrepreneurs have nowhere to go in America. There is no university in the world that is geared to teach explorers. No one teaches entrepreneurship. No. But we all teach the the MBA courses, uh, the mediocre but arrogant courses, the MBA courses, now they, they are all over. And that's why entrepreneurs have such a hard time passing on their companies, because they see the world completely different from the managers. The entrepreneurs are uh, sit of their pants, start with what you have, use every contact you have, start small, tentative retreat, right. and do what one of your greatest uh, presidents said, that that's the way to do it. You do it, if it works, you do more. If it doesn't work, you stop. I think it was uh, Teddy Roosevelt that, that said that. Could so be. my point is the, the explorers are require a set of skill that is different from the managers. So. It's absolutely counterproductive to get somebody who wants to start a business in Granby and say to this person, you have to learn to make it, sell it, look after the money, and you have to learn to write a business plan. That's you can tell to somebody who's going to manage a company. You have to understand all the sectors of the company. But it's totally useless to somebody who wants to start a business and is doing it as an with an entrepreneurial spirit risking everything, being tentative, small, and finding their way. So I prefer that to the uh, entrepreneur, we teach them to form the team. Mm -hmm. Once they have the company, they can employ the manager to run it. But if you don't have a company, what do you need a manager for? Makes perfect sense. Thanks very much. Been here today with Dr. Ernesto Soroli, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you, Jerry. Much love. Thank you. Thank you.